Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast. The Boston Celtics won last night against the Dallas Mavericks in their Game 2 matchup to take a 2-0 series lead moving forward here. And it was a very interesting game because overall it was pretty sloppy, I thought, from both teams. Even some of the refing fans of both sides were getting upset over this one, but I think that really when you look at the Celtics as a whole, we knew that there was going to be one of these bad shooting nights coming. We knew that there was going to be a Luka Doncic massive game as well, and both of those were going to go in favor of the Mavericks. We got a little bit of both of those. Luka was hotter in the first half than he was in the second, but the Celtics shot just 10 of 39 from three, and we're still able to win this game. And you could sort of feel that to some degree, this was coming over time where, you know, you look up in the first quarter and things seemed to be just really ugly. Luka Doncic was hitting every shot, getting to all of his spots. He did something... Um, It looked like his approach at least was a little bit more to sort of work himself off the ball as well to get in some of these mismatches against smaller defenders. He was posting them up. Again, just that mid-range shot, especially on those fades, is just unguardable. And he ended up having 20 points with, you know, two minutes into the second quarter. It was tremendous. Meanwhile, the Celtics were really struggling to knock down their shots. It wasn't for a lack of being able to create these looks for themselves, but they just weren't falling, which is something that we've seen from the Celtics really, you know, for years now, especially during this Joe Missoula tenure of they are very three happy what happens when those shots start to, you know, not fall quite as much. And last night was an example of the fact that their defense, which is something that again was really prioritized during the 2021-22 season with Ime Udoka as their head coach that the defense was the backbone of their identity. Now it is a little bit more offensive, but they have just so much talent on the defensive side of the ball, elite defensive personnel. That's why you see Derek White and Drew Holiday, all defensive teams as long as all along with all of the other defenders they have with their star players in the Jays and Al Horford and Chris Dapps, Porzingis. But I mentioned the name Drew Holiday, and he really was the number one story, I thought, of this game, where he was just absolutely tremendous. 26 points, 11 of 14 from the field, 2 for 4 from 3. Add to that another 11 rebounds and was playing stellar defense the entire night, either matched up against Kyrie Irving or Luka Doncic. And he was the best player for the Celtics last night. Obviously, there is always conversations with the Celtics as to who is their best player. But you look at these games and it feels like for any five-minute stretch, it can be a different player. We saw that in Game 1 with Chris Stapps Porzingis having his hot night. Drew was also extremely impactful in that one, but Jalen Brown was really the one that stole the show. In this game, it was Drew just about the entire way, and... It was really encouraging to see, you know, I think that Drew is somebody who, oh, it seems like over the past handful of years has had his number of critics when it comes to what level of offense can he carry when the postseason comes around, and especially while Chris Middleton was injured for the Bucks, it felt like he was a little bit overtaxed on that offensive end, along with being the primary point of attack defender on the other side, and now he is in a system with the Celtics where he can you know, relax a little bit more, you could say, offensively. And even in a night like last night, as much as he was phenomenal, he was just making the heads-up plays in order to get himself these looks. And specifically, it was getting him these paint touches, which is something that we have seen sort of the numbers dip off in terms of how often he gets to the paint at times. But He credited Jason Tatum in his post-game interview right after the game talking about the way that Jason Tatum, who, listen, I understand, extremely inefficient night. You don't have to tell me, but Tatum is the hub of that offense, and that's why Drew credited him because it seemed like Tatum and Drew just had this really elite connection last night where it was Tatum driving, getting double-teamed, and every time it seemed like he got stuck, 
Drew Holiday was just making the heads up cuts and that's something that I loved so much if you go back to last year and the Denver Nuggets when they won the championship. It was just the awareness and it felt like one of those systems where Nikola Jokic is just such a smart basketball player and his playmaking is so elite that his entire team understands get to the open spot and he will find you. Obviously, Jason Tatum is not the same level of playmaker as Jokic is, but he is massively improved. And again, as much as, you know, this definitely isn't a day where a ton of people are going out and throwing Jason Tatum any parades, I think that he and the entirety of this Celtics team, we've just seen their basketball IQ go to another level. And that's why, uh, Tatum and Drew were connecting on so many of these opportunities. But like I mentioned, Holiday finishes with 26. Jalen Brown with 21 as well. A little bit of a quieter game. Didn't necessarily have quite the same level of you know eye-popping performance but at the same time he continues to make all of the right plays it's interesting you know Jalen Brown definitely in the eyes of the public is probably headed towards a finals MVP as much as I do think that Jalen Jason Tatum provides a lot of offensive creation that doesn't necessarily always stick out on the box score did have 12 assists last night but you know when you're shooting 6 of 22 it's hard to again praise you all too much in that instance but I think that you know ultimately for this Celtics team you know you can go in a bunch of different directions as to who is playing the best for them I would say if finals MVP were to be handed out, obviously two game sample size is nothing and this series is not over yet, but Drew Holiday would probably be my vote as things stand today. Now again, obviously a lot more series to go here, but Drew has just been such an impactful piece of making the Celtics team run the way that they do. But like I mentioned, Jason Tatum, 6 of 22 from the floor, 1 of 7 from 3. It feels like the majority of the time here, Tatum is making the right plays. He's the primary ball handler for the Celtics. He is dealing with a lot of double teams, even though it seems like some Mavericks fans are almost a little reluctant to admit that there is that extra level of attention on him. You know, Jason Kidd, he had the press conference over the weekend of calling Jalen Brown the Celtics' best player. But when you do look at the way that the Mavericks choose to guard the Jays, Jason Tatum is receiving more attention than Jalen Brown. And ultimately, again, I think that, and you know, Shaquille O'Neal talked to Jalen Brown about this idea as well. Ultimately, it's a media narrative of who is the best player. I think it just goes to speak how talented this Celtics team is as a whole. And it's going to be an uphill battle for the Mavericks to be able to sort of overcome the talent discrepancy outside of and this is something that we talked about last week as well. Top two players for each team. You want to call them a wash. Yeah, headed into the series, a lot of people were favoring the Mavericks. Maybe that still is the case. But, you know, regardless, you take the top two players from each team out of it. The Celtics have the depth that is necessary to be able to, you know, control a series like this. And it only becomes that much harder for the Mavericks to win when Kyrie Irving just feels invisible on a lot of instances throughout this game. Now, ultimately, he finishes with 16 points. He had, I believe it was eight in the first quarter, and he got himself going for a little bit of a stretch where the Mavericks made things interesting in the fourth quarter as well. But he was just, you know, dead silent. And he was playing big minutes where Jason Kidd was leaving Kyrie and Luka out for, if not the entire, just about the entire third quarter, where typically he chooses to, you know, sort of stagger their minutes at times. And Kyrie just could not get anything done. The Celtics feel very comfortable going up against Kyrie Irving. Obviously, there's a ton of animosity behind that matchup, and it has been a little bit of a statement from the Celtics of throw these different looks at Kyrie Irving. I mean, you talk about Drew Holiday, the defense that he played. Jalen Brown had really the standout defensive possession of the game. It was in the second quarter, I believe, when he forced him into that travel, you know, when he was playing the ISO game against Jalen Brown, but 
Kyrie needs to be more effective if the Mavericks are going to have any type of shot in this series because you look at the other role players that there are for the Mavericks and Derek Jones Jr. and P.J. Washington and Josh Green, all of these players that helped contribute throughout the course of their run to the finals here, but also it's really hard to ask them in a hostile environment in Boston to be these, you know, very reliable three-point shooters when that's never really been their identity. And the reason why they were able to have so much success is because of the fact that opposing teams were really doubling down on Luka Doncic and, you know, giving up shots in the corner. And the Celtics have decided, for the most part, to play Luka Doncic one-on-one, which means that, you know... Luka has been getting his throughout these games. It was 30 points, I believe, in game one, 32 points last night on 12 of 21 shooting. Some weird free throw stuff going on with Luka. Not that he is, you know, in any world to blame necessarily for the Mavericks being in this hole, but uh, he shot four of eight from the free throw line last night. I've been saying it. There have been moments. There was the end of that OKC game where... Luca had the chance at the four point possession to make it a one possession game and he ended up missing that free throw in crunch time as well. He's been extremely tasked and we can see that he's dealing with these injuries all the way throughout. That's where Kyrie needs to be able to step up in certain instances and carry some of the load and that's just something that we haven't seen. I'm curious how much of it does play into the back and forth between him and Celtics fans. He puts out the quote sort of egging on the Celtics fans a little bit of I thought it was going to be louder in TD Garden and you know Celtics fans that only was going to ignite them chirping a little bit. I feel like ultimately you know the bad blood really between Boston and Kyrie should be a thing of the past but at the same time you know at least for a game like last night I fully understand the Celtics fans booing him because they he sort of challenged them to make more noise and you know ultimately it's just it's this extra storyline and subplot that's sort of playing in. Kyrie was getting put on this pedestal throughout the Mavericks run through the Western Conference playoffs, and for good reason. It was really encouraging to see one of the most fun players of this past generation to play basketball again in such a skillful and fun way of you know playing meaningful basketball in big moments once again which it's been you know a number of years since we've truly seen that probably 2017 and he's just been absent for a lot of this series and I wouldn't say that he's been atrocious a lot of people are burying him I still feel like there's he can turn this thing around but at the same time, this could very easily be a matchup issue that the Celtics feel confident in the defenders they have to throw at Kyrie. But that is sort of a larger conversation of what can the Mavericks do to try and stage a come- comeback. And on that note as well, do they even have a chance of coming back? So that's something we're going to dive into next. But first, we have to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. <laughs> 